A federal court has dismissed the government's challenge of a compensation order for First Nations children. Ottawa is on the hook for billions of dollars in compensation related to the on-reserve child welfare system. It had previously been ordered to pay each affected child $40,000. Will the government appeal today's ruling again, continue that legal battle? That's something we'll be exploring on the program today. First, though, we go to Cindy Blackstock, who launched the human rights complaint that led to the ruling along with the Assembly of First Nations. Ms. Blackstock is the executive director of First Nations Child and Family Caring Society, and she is in Ottawa. Cindy Blackstock, you've got a limited amount of time, so I want to get right to it. You filed uh, the original human rights complaint over 14 years ago. I want to get your reaction to the ruling today. You know, I am so delighted again that the federal court has upheld the tribunal's two decisions. One is that the federal government must compensate the victims of Canada's ongoing uh, discrimination that is separating First Nations families and also denying children off reserve um, access to services under Jordan's principle. And uh, this is, these are two of the top calls to action. So it links directly to honoring the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action. This was a complete win for kids. And now the question becomes, will the federal government finally put down its sword and stop fighting First Nations children and treat them equally? It would be the first time in the history of the country if they ended their discrimination in federally funded public services. Okay, so let's talk about that because this ruling could be appealed. And if it was, it would be to the Supreme yeah. Court. Do you anticipate that happening? Uh, it could be appealed to the Federal Court of Appeal, which is mm -hmm. just below the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Yes, the federal government has 30 days. Their past behavior is they will appeal it. And that's why it's so essential that Canadians speak up and say that, look, we're, we're done with this. No more injustice for First Nations kids. We've seen enough of the injustice in the children who are lost in residential schools and those who are trying to re still recover from residential schools. So they can't be doing it to this generation. Canadians can make a difference tomorrow. The, the Trudeau government has claimed um, before that it is indeed, uh, they say, compensating um, children and families through two separate but related class action lawsuits, they claim that settlement would actually end up paying out more than what the tribunal can do, and that is a maximum of $40,000. Can I just get your, I know you've talked about this before, but can you explain to me where you see that? Right, so if you remember the debate back in 2019 in that election, the yeah. prime minister said he'd compensate kids. Well, no, there's been no compensation. And what we have said is that these are human rights damages. You pay the $40,000 and then you can pay some other folks more. And keep in mind, David, that the government behaved its way into this compensation order. We had two evidence-based solutions in 2000 and in 2005 that if the government had it acted on that or even acted after we filed the case, there wouldn't be victims to compensate because those people wouldn't have been hurt. What uh, the federal government has made changes um, moving forward and it made those a couple of years ago, just uh, you know, shortly after essentially you filed this complaint, maybe not shortly after you filed this complaint. Uh, but why is it important to compensate those who were impacted in history? It's important to uh, compensate them because you need to think about what happened to these kids. And these are still children, David, in vast majority of cases. In, in many cases, children were separated from their families because the federal government did, was not providing even the same level of child welfare funding that other children who had not gone through the trauma residential schools received. The second thing that was happening is the federal government was denying basic services. For example, they were putting a cap on the number of feeding tubes that parents could get. So you had to decide, are you going to rewash the feeding tube and infect your child, or are you going to not feed them? Children literally died waiting for services, and the federal government would say that that case was resolved. These are services in most cases other children got without You mean they'd question. say it was resolved because the child was dead? Because the child is dead. That is on the record. And we had a child, for example, she's four years old. She was uh, going into palliative care just in the Christmas season. And she needed a piece of medical equipment so she wouldn't suffocate. It goes through the hands of 14 different bureaucrats before someone writes on there, absolutely not. Those are the people we're compensating. 
And I don't think $40,000 even comes near what it, uh, what it met, what those poor ch children suffered through. But by God, the federal government owes those kids a minimum of $40,000. So they should be paying up and then they should be trying to do what's necessary to remedy some of the other harms these families have experienced. Can I ask you about the, the, the road on which reconciliation must pass and, and where yeah. this is situated on that road? Is it is it a barrier? I mean, it's so long as this legal challenge continues, and, and you have just predicted that perhaps the, the federal government will once again challenge it, move it up to the yeah. federal court of appeal, and potentially all the way to the Supreme Court. If that keeps happening, do you believe that the other initiatives by the Trudeau government can move forward? Or is this just such a roadblock on that path to reconciliation? Keep in mind that when the survivors did the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action, mm -hmm. they made ending the inequalities in child welfare and providing equitable public services through Jordan's principle, the number one and number three call to action. These are the most important things to survivors. They told their truths, including about burying those children in unmarked graves so that their grandchildren didn't have to go through it. How can we possibly have justice in this country if we're continuing to abuse this generation of First Nations children and then call that reconciliation? It's unacceptable. It needs to stop. Today's federal court decision, Ms. Blackstock, comes the day before uh, the first National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. What would you like Canadians to think about, to reflect on tomorrow? To think about it almost like Remembrance Day, keep in mind that children were more likely to die in residential schools than a soldier was during the Second World War. Read the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's executive summary and those calls to action, and then send a note to your Prime Minister saying you heard about this ruling that came down today and you do not want them to appeal it. Cindy Blackstock, thank you so much for your time. We do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.